Now you have to admit that is cute as cute can be. Raccoons, they're so incredible. They're so beautiful. I look at these two. I wish I could um, enlarge this picture with two of them in the tree. And this picture. I'm taking a nap. Good night. Very cute. Indiana wants to kill them. Indiana wants to kill raccoons, coyotes, and possums. They're a nuisance. So, Indiana, the Department of Natural Resources, has proposed a new rule. The current rule leaves to the discretion of the animal control officer whether or not to kill an animal or release it back into the wildlife. They want to make it mandatory. How long have we been living this pretense that we're a civilized society? That we are a civilized people? How long have we been living this pretense that there's nothing wrong with us? Uh-uh. No. Kill those engines. We want their land. Kill them. And we have been living in the killing fields since this country started. And now we are just killing everything that we consider to be a nuisance. Hell, we kill one another just to get ahead. That is the majority of Americans. I'm sorry. Last night, I'm standing there with two neighbors. And this one woman starts to tell the story of how a bird that I guess is close to a bat flew into her home. Her door was open. That's happened to me <laughs> a lot in one particular home that I lived in. And I would get birds and, um, oh, uh, not gerbils. Jesus, I can't. Oh, wow, my brain is really gone. What is that little critter that is kind of like a gerbil? Okay, well, they would forever find their way into my home. And, yeah, it was sometimes, took me a long time to catch them and get them outside. But this woman, she caught this bird that flew into her home by throwing a towel over it, finally, taking it outside, and quote, unquote, I beat it to death. I beat it to death. When I first arrived in South Carolina, I was, well, not the first, the second time I arrived in South Carolina, I was staying at a hotel, and two of the women who worked at the hotel were talking. And one started telling the other one a story about how her son just got his license and they were driving down the road and he was driving and he saw a turkey in the road and he kept asking his mother, please, mom, please, can't I hit it, please? And she finally relented and said, fine, but you are the one who's going to clean the car. So they slaughtered that turkey in the road. How many times have I heard similar stories from Americans? I, I am really horrified by what we are. I can't say what we have become. What we have become is a people who now, it's like, the psychopath, the narcissist, the people who just don't care about anything but their own lives, they are out of the closet thinking they can do whatever the hell they want to do. I beat it to death. Mom, mom, please let me kill that turkey. Okay, honey, as long as you clean the car. I also remember, and this was, wow, maybe 10 years ago, I was walking 
with somebody that lived in my neighborhood in Massachusetts. And he had like a five-year-old son. We were walking down the street and his son, there was, we were going over this little bridge over this little creek. His son saw a frog and just picked it up. And then said something about a cage for it. And his father said, sure. And I couldn't help myself. And I said, you know, I've often said to children, what would, what do you think you would feel like if some giant showed up and just scooped you up and took you to a whole nother place to live? And I can't remember verbatim what happened, but I couldn't not say something. And then I said to the father, I said, well, you're teaching him that humans don't need to respect other species. Fortunately, I came across this, the animal control worker in Indiana, who has been an animal control worker for 14 years said that he most frequently catches female raccoons and possums, often with their babies, as they try to find a warm, dry place to care for their young. If females and babies are disproportionately killed, he worries the populations won't be able to recover. How many people do you think even care? Yes, they're a nuisance. And my God, <laughs> raccoons, possums, well, they get into areas where people have poultry and they kill chickens and eat their eggs. Well, I say to you poultry owners that you might want to create a very secure place for your chickens. Like my friend here in South Carolina, she's got three beautiful chickens and her husband built a very secure pen outdoors and they go into their little home to sleep at night and that little home is locked up so they're safe but no killing killing is easier so very often people just go for the kill right and so many just enjoy killing here in our country. Mommy, please let me kill that turkey. How do you think we became the people we are? We grew up with parents that didn't know wrong from right and believed they had an absolute right to kill so they teach their children that they have a right. Yes, the human being is superior over all species. Well, that has been something that I have disagreed with my entire life. So this animal control officer also said this, there is no way I can morally look at myself in a mirror knowing I'm slaughtering hundreds of animals a year. And he added, he would consider closing his business if this rule is adopted. This is not why I got into this line of work. Well, that's what it takes, unfortunately. People who get to a point where they cannot they don't have an option to engage in practices that are immoral. And I will say this till I'm blue in the face and, yep, dead. The only way that we can ever manifest any change in this country, in the world, is if individuals look at themselves 
reevaluate how they're living. Face their own evil. And yeah, I very often now just see good versus evil. Simple. Do you want the killing of all raccoons and possums and coyotes in Indiana? If not, you can come over here, click on the link below, come over here to the in.gov site, and you can post your comment about what Indiana plans on doing. But I am telling you that it is not just Indiana. Killing everything is the easy way to go here in our country. No, I'm sorry, guys. Get upset with me, but we are not a moral good people. The BLM has been wanting to lift the ban of euthanizing wild horses and burros since it started, I think, back in 40, 45 years ago. Fortunately, the omnibus bill has left that ban intact, but the BLM is not going to stop. They want to kill and slaughter, selfish slaughter, these animals. These are the Mustangs that helped build this country. We don't need them anymore, so get rid of them. They're a nuisance, after all. They graze. Yeah, they eat grass. They damage land. We've got to get rid of them. There's too many of them. No, I'm sorry, you BLM. Don't say there's too many of them. You've gotten rid of so many. Forcing them into pens. Traumatizing them with your helicopters. Rounding them up. Forcing them into pens and then selling them off. And so often you sell them to people who then sell them for slaughter. The BLM will not stop until they finally get its way to kill off all of these beautiful, incredibly intelligent animals right here. But hell, what else do we have? 75% of Earth's land broken. It's broken. A major report finds. <gasps> And who, who produced that report? Uh, it was the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, United Nations. The IPBES is the IPCC for biodiversity. It's a scientific, well, panel and they came up with this scientific assessment of the status of non-human life that makes up the Earth's life support system, a major companion report, was released Friday, documenting the rapid and dangerous decline in biodiversity. And it called for fundamental changes in how we live, run our societies, and our economy. And if you know anything about Agenda 2030, this is what... this would prompt you to think, oh, Agenda 2030. They herding the human population into mega regions where you won't be able to drive a car anymore and you won't be able to travel but on a bike or walk and you will live in very tiny apartments where you will be under surveillance 24-7 Everything you do, every aspect of your life, watched, monitored, stored, collected, 1984 on steroids. And if you've not read 1984, I suggest you read it because we're living it. We're living it. Although 1984, the book, tells a story that, yeah, smacks you as, wow, I wouldn't want to live that. That seems pure evil, like pure evil. <laughs> well, 
They have something designed for all of us. That there is no other word but evil, but hell. What they have designed for us, that's an understatement. No kidding. Yeah. And the wetlands have been hit the hardest with 87% loss lost globally in the last 300 years. How do they know it's 300 years? 300 years. How do they know that? Were they recording what was happening to the wetlands 300 years ago? Less than 25% of the Earth's land surface has escaped the substantial impacts of human activity, and by 2050, this will have fallen to less than 10%. My God, we have way too many people on the planet as it is. But if we only have 10% of this planet to live, we've got to get rid of an awful lot of people. And those who survive, well... They need to fundamentally change. Their lifestyle right now is killing Mother Earth. So, you got to give up your cars. You got to accept all of these rules and regulations coming out of the United Nations. And virtually everything coming out of the United Nations is a lie. Climate change. And this biodiversity assessment, I'm not saying that humans have not done an awful lot of damage to our world, but hey, they mentioned something about agriculture. Too many cows grazing. Too many cows grazing. Okay, we now have corporate agriculture. Perhaps we should go back to local farming. But it was funny when I read that. Too many cows grazing. And I thought, oh, right, the Bundys, the BLM, those cows grazing. You got to regulate everybody, all the ranchers, because the cows are destroying the land. But when you know what the BLM has been saying about the horses, you guys are eating too much grass, and we need that grass for the cows. Oh, so you've been rounding them up for decades, getting rid of them. You need the grass for the cows, for the ranchers. But then you claim that the cows are grazing too much. We are in big trouble here. But guys, the trouble is the individual human being who simply won't do the research, who will just continue to believe all of the lies coming out of these institutions, these organizations, all of the lies being spoken by all of those individuals and all of the individuals who support and work and make their living in these institutions and organizations. We are so trapped in lies. And those lies are killing off all life. Yep, I'll say it again. Until the individual actually does some work on themselves to bring them to a higher level of consciousness where life is not just about them, but they live principles that they speak instead of just speaking them, absolutely nothing will change.